everyone, this is Kaza Aliyahu Yasharal and welcome to another of our videos in this series in which we are showing the true Jerusalem of the scriptures, the true location of Yerushalayim. And today we are going to, you know, I'm actually going to lay a foundation as to where or how I got where I am at this time. Because just to claim that this place is Yerushalayim, you might say I am you know crazy into thinking that but I want to lay a foundation as to how I got here of course you can check out our previous videos we looked at um, the land of briars and thorns um, to show the land of briars and thorns as the most had prophesied that his land would become a land of briars and thorns and we also showed you that the land itself was prophesied to be desolate that there will be nothing living there and there will be no cities etc there but the land will be desolate and waste and we also showed that um, Abraham was told to sojourn in a land that he was to inherit and he was to sojourn there in tents and that promise also came on Isaac who also dwelt in that land in tents and on Jacob or Jacob who also dwelt on that land in tents and we are showing you that in the end times his children are being called back once again to dwell in this land that they are to inherit as a possession so they just like Abraham just like Isaac just like Jacob will be sojourning into the land until the Most High is ready to bring them into Mount Zion all right so let me just give you a brief summary of how I got here. Now, the Bible speaks about predestination. Predestination. That there are just some people that the Most High predestinates according to His will. So those who are chosen by Him are those He predestinates to perform certain functions. So in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 verse 4 to 6 and verses 10 to 11 it says according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be set apart or holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahusha Hamashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the splendor of his favor wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather in one all things in Hamashiach both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him so he predestinates people according to his pleasure that they would gather together everything in earth and in heaven and there are some people he is using now to gather his people together here on earth these people have been predestinated in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will so we are predestinated according to Yahuwah and his purpose and his will that he wants to achieve and his will his most profound will as spoken in scripture is gathering his people back together into the land now the reason I'm saying this is because that at the most I showed me a sign in 2015 that um, bottled my mind for a while because if you remember 2015 was the year in which they had the four blood moons and there were many pronouncements as to what was going to happen in the world at that time now me speaking about this is not me exalting myself but getting this is integral to the revelation that will come later on of where 
Jerusalem is today. Now, in that same year, the birth dates of my family members lined up with those feast dates. And it was very puzzling to me. And that was the time then I started thinking that, you know, you're truly an Israelite. But apart from that, and I'm gonna, it should be showing on your screen, it made me wonder why would it line up so perfectly? Because I checked out the odds of that happening in one family. So it was impossible for it to happen naturally that all children of a woman and their and her grandchildren all matched up perfectly in terms of seniority with the feast dates of that year. And so then I realized that something was different and that I had to pay attention to what was happening. And then you can check out an article on our website that I wrote about it. And this article is, is to actually show the many different correlations and the many different, um, the many different things about that, that matching up of feast dates and birthdays. It is very, very intriguing to say the least. And when you read all of that, you will realize that it could not have happened by chance. All right. And as I said, that was the time that I accepted that I was an Israelite. Because at the same time, the Most High sent a prophetess to me, telling me that I am an Israelite. Those days, I didn't even care about that. And I remember telling the person that it doesn't matter who we are, because that was what we were taught in churchianity. It doesn't matter who you were. And that was, yeah, around 2015. This year in September 2015, an amazing series of events will take place all within a two-week period. First of all, September 13th is the Feast of Trumpets with a partial solar eclipse occurring on that same day. Then two weeks later on September 28th is the actual fourth blood moon occurring on the Feast of Tabernacles, both dates being significant holy days according to the Bible. Now the main focus in this video are the two other huge events to also take place in September and are sandwiched between these two feast dates of September 13th and the 28th of this year. One is on September 23rd with the Pope of Rome arriving in the United States where he will first visit the White House and then also address the United States Congress in Washington DC. Then two days later on September 25th the Pope will address the United Nations General Assembly in New York, where he'll have the spotlight on the official launching and opening day of what's called the Post-2015 Sustainable Development Agenda. Now this term is the actual title of an historic One World Government contract and plan authored by the United Nations leader Ban Ki-moon months ago and has already been emphatically agreed upon behind the scenes by most all of today's world leaders. And so the actual signing date will take place this September 25th in New York by the world's leaders who will officially launch this well-prepared one world government agenda into action. When you start reading this United Nations document, it is immediately crystal clear that today's world leaders greater intent including the popes is to take over the entire world's wealth and the world's economy and governments to take over the world's financial systems and global food distribution and to entirely dominate and control the seven billion citizens of the world and since the one world agenda is being deceptively held up as a humanitarian solution to all of the world's problems then much of the world's people will be fooled into gladly signing on to it. And so the stage is set for the Pope of Rome to gain the world's attention in September 2015 in leading the charge for the official launching of the United Nations new One World Government agenda. So this New World Order that is being spoken about is manifested today in what is called the fourth industrial revolution that is being spearheaded by Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. 
And remember, what's the importance of this fourth industrial revolution? It is the fourth kingdom of Daniel. And remember, in the book of Daniel, it is prophesied that when the fourth kingdom is set up, then Hamashiach is going to return and set up a kingdom that will last forever. So this New World Order, fourth industrial revolution kingdom that they're setting up, it is a sure indicator that we are close to the end time. And we see, and we have been speaking here on just a word about the mark of the beast that they have given the world that thing that they put yeah that they pointed thing that they put here yeah the mark of the beast and you can check out our video what does it mean to take a mark in the right hand and in the forehead to see the mark of the beast we are right near the very end and we are going to show you the connection now between that and we are Yerushalayim is today. We are going to show you that just as he showed us that sign as to the end time new world order through those um, blood moons, he has showed me again another sign to show me without a doubt where Yerushalayim, where Jerusalem is today. So just stay tuned and you will see. Right? It might not be making sense right now. But you will see at the very end, you will see how it all plays out. Very interesting, alright? Remember, I'm giving you a foundation to let you know why I can say the foolishness that I'm saying about where Israel is. Alright? So, on September 23rd, 2017, there was a great sign in the sky. The Revelation 12 prophecy occurred in the sky on September 23rd, 2017. The constellation of Virgo, the woman, clothed with the sun, with the sun at her side, and the moon at her feet, and a crown of 12 stars, the constellation of Leo, the 12 tribes of Israel over her head. That occurred September 23rd, 2017. And I don't know if you were watching that. You know, that same year, I don't remember the month, was it August, I think, 2017, there was a great eclipse across the United States of America. United States of America, if you know, is the headquarters of Babylon, all right? This is the military arm of Babylon and the commercial headquarters of Babylon. So there was a arch made across America from the northwest to the, to the southeast that year and in 2024 there will be another arch going across the other way from northeast to southwest and they will cross in a place they call little Egypt now you can't make this up little Egypt remember his people are to be delivered again into a second exodus according to the book of Ezekiel chapter 20. So 2024 was the date. Now, go back to 2020. That's when the coronavirus um, thing started. And in 2020, it was heavily laid on me to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And I decided to keep the Feast of Tabernacles in the bushes alone with my little daughter at the time. But what happened during that year was that I was given many dreams while I was in the bushes. And one of the dreams was about the year 2024. And it was like the most I was showing me signs of the end time. And he showed me a date 2024 and I do not remember the exact date. I didn't remember the month. And I was happy I didn't remember it because I would have to speak it and be worrying if that month was the coming to fruition. <laughs> yeah, so I'm happy, but it showed me 2024. I don't know what will happen 2024, but I remember that the two um, the eclipses will cross that year. So you show them for signs, so it's something significant. Now, another significant thing happened that year. When I went to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, I think it started about the 31st of September, 30th of September, or something like that. But it ended on the 7th of October, 2000, and 
20. Now, when I checked the 7th of October 2020 to the time when the next eclipse is to happen, which would be, what is it, the 8th of April 2024, it was exactly three and a half years to the exact day three and a half years i mean how many times the three and a half years is there in prophecy three and a half years to the exact day and so i was thinking i was saying something is really up and i don't know what it is why the most high is giving me these things so fast forward now to 2022 october 2022 the most I, it was September or October? <laughs> September 2022, the most I gave me a dream pointing me to go to South Africa. Now, when I got the dream, I didn't know that it was pointed to South Africa because he showed me in the dream uh, an arrow pointed to Willow Dean. Now, it was after a brother who was in the assembly with us who lives in South Africa came and told me that the Most High says we should come to South Africa. I said, no, the Most High has not shown me that. And then I decided to go and look into the dream that he gave me. And I decided to Google Willardine. And when I checked out Willardine, some websites were saying there's only one Willardine um, in the world, and it is in South Africa. And I was like, wow. Now there's another little community in Jamaica called Willardine. But apart from that, Willow Dean is in South Africa. So I know, not wanting to leave where I was, because some people will tell you, hey, they have migrated, they've gone to Ghana, they've gone to Uganda, Tanzania. I did not come here willingly because I was comfortable where I was. <laughs> and being too comfortable, when the most I showed us, and we had a meeting online with our group as well our small group at a meeting and the most i just put several dreams together and everybody was like wow when everything came together that the most i really is saying that we should go to south africa now i didn't know anything about south africa where it comes to anything at all or any history at all but being there and actually tarrying the most i gave me in a dream and showed me the hand pointing again and the voice with a voice saying in a vision with a voice saying i have found you wanting now when i heard that i was i woke up very scared because it reminded me of um nebuchadnezzar's son who had profaned the things of the most high and the most High had shown him that he would die so I was very scared and immediately I just jumped up and left. <laughs> it took me about, about two days. The flight was about two days after that happened or three days. Yeah. And I came to South Africa. The, was it the 5th of October? One of those days. Which was almost exactly two years after the Feast of Tabernacles ended. In 2020 I call that two years yeah no I didn't plan all of these times I didn't plan all of these times it was all the doing of the most high so in during the dream as well as I was speaking about my family my sister also got a dream and her dream matched up to show that this South Africa would be where it would be and the dream centered on willow tree and since i came to south africa the willow tree has followed us um the place where we stayed willow trees were there very profound and the name willow dean means um willow valley and around the place from where i, st I stayed first there was a road called Valley Road, and on that road, willow trees, willow trees, willow trees, willow trees, all over that road. So when we moved and relocated and came to the, where, I, where I am now, 
right outside the gate, willow trees, willow trees. And these willow trees that are outside here, we didn't even know they were willow trees until we searched for out and realized that they were a species of willow. So the willow tree is what has followed us. So what I'm saying is that I am not speaking only by just speaking like, you know, and some people will tell you, okay, this is where you should go because they have calculated this, are calculated that. No, it's all signs. It's all the leading of the Most High. All right? People have gone to other countries. Yeah? But we came here not knowing anything, not knowing why we came here or anything like that. But the Most High is showing us little by little the reason we are here and what this place actually really is. So I've showed you what we have seen since we came here. Just a little summary that this is the land of briars and thorns. In Isaiah 5 verse 5 to 6, the most I had prophesied. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down. Now everyone knows how South Africa has been trodden down of the Gentiles. Everybody won, the Belgians, the French, I think the Portuguese ones, the Dutch, the English, have all trodden it down because the Most High has taken away the hedges so they cannot protect themselves. And verse 6 says, And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. So, even a place like this where we are is semi semi desert area, hardly any rain, but full of briars and thorns. Isaiah 32, 13 to 15. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken. The multitude of the city shall be left. The forts and towers shall be dense forever. A joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. Now listen to this very carefully. Until the Ruach or until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. In other words, it will remain a land of briars and thorns until the Most High comes to execute his end time will upon the nation. So no nation that is called Israel can never ever be anything but a land of briars and thorns until the Most High decides to move. And when he moves, he tells us that he will move with the whole 12 tribes of Israel. Not only the house of Judah, three tribes. It will be all 12 tribes at once. And that is when it will become a fruitful field. Then another thing that we saw here, a land without May, uh, much fruit trees. There were not much trees. This is the most startling thing that we saw. The people there were comfortable with the briars and thorns so much that in their yards they had trees of briars and thorns. They didn't have any fruit trees. And we were wondering, we were coming from that side of the world, we were used to this, we were wondering why no fruit trees. Then we looked to the prophecies and then we realized Deuteronomy 28, 18 says, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So, he cursed the fruit of the land. And of course, the fruit of the land refers to the produce, whatever produce. But we realize that even the literal fruit was cursed. And not only the fruit was cursed, of course, the whole fruit of the land was cursed because there is little ground farming. We live in a, a farming area a village area and there are not much there is not much farming there why because he said in Isaiah 725 and on all hills that shall be digged with the mattock there shall not come thither the fear of briars and thorns but it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and for the treading of lesser cattle not much of the land is used for farming food the people here do not farm food. Why? 
there is no long there is not the fear of briars and thorns it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and for the treading of lesser cattle sheep and goat all you see around here cows sheep and goats nothing else the people here cannot farm and why can they not farm because it is too expensive for them to farm <laughs> So, until now, let's get down to the meat of the matter. I just want to lay a foundation as to why we are, I, I, I am saying what I am saying. I came upon videos about South Africa being the land. And I didn't pay much attention to them. I just had a passing interest until I watched a couple of them. And saw that the reasons they were saying this were because they were digging up old maps. And saw the names of the places in the maps. And then getting to understand the international conspiracy because the place called y um, Yasharal or Israel today must be desolate. But we have some people and we have Hamashiach warning us in Revelation 2.9 about those who say they are Jews and are not. But we have some people who start have a country called Israel. So getting to understand the lies of the people in the world and if they lied even about the shape of the earth, telling you that the earth is a globe spinning through space, well, one of the biggest lies that they teach us from before we can read and write. When you look at those lies that they have told us, you realize that there will be no stopping the lies that they will give us. Why? The curses of the law. As long as Israel is blinded, not knowing who they are, not turning back to the Most High, then the other nations of the earth will be kings of the earth. That's it. In the book of Lamentations 1.5, it says, Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper. Yeah? So whenever we are in captivity, whenever we are blinded, our enemies are the chief nations of the earth. So do you think the chief nations of the earth, no, are going to want us to know who we are so we can turn back to the Most High? Because the Most High says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn. Yes? He says he will heal their land. He will heal their land. That means their land in the end time will need healing. Because what? Because it is desolate and waste. So these people are not going to want the children of Israel to know their land. They are not going to want them to know who they are. So they put them, give them a religion called Christianity, blinding them, telling them that they are Gentiles. Because if they find out who they are, because the word says blindness in part has happened to Israel or Yasharal until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So as long as they can keep us blinded, then they can postpone the fullness of the Gentiles coming in. They can continue their rule. So what do they do? What have they done? They have discarded the maps of a many years ago. Discarded them and they have changed the names of places and relocated different places. Reclo relocated and changed the names of rivers and the names of different, different places. So after coming up, up, up on videos about South Africa being the land, I saw a video about Namibia being the location of Yerushalayim from a, a YouTube channel called Jerusalem Script. And I found it very, very interesting. Why? He went into detail showing the ruins because this Jerusalem must be ruined because Hamashiach said, there shall not be one stone left upon another. So Jerusalem must be in ruins. And he came, he came up on a map and he showed us the ruins of Jerusalem. And it's very interesting. Why? He showed the exact dimensions. How far this sh should be from it. How far Gilgal should be. How far this should be. How far Bethlehem should be. How far. It was very, very detailed. And he showed it from the map. Yeah? He showed it from the map. Because Namibia, the most sparsely one of, one of the most, the second most sparsely populated nation in the world has a, des, has a desolate wasteland and that is where Jerusalem is said to be. Now, 
when I looked at that now, I sent the video of Jerusalem script to someone in my group. And they sent me back another video. <clears throat> now, this, this video that made me realize, without a doubt, <clears throat> that Jerusalem is in Namibia. Yes, you may laugh. <laughs> you may laugh. You are going to see it. I can tell you that you are going to see it. Because while I was going through that video and watching that video, I noticed something. There is a place called Wombat. Wombat, Wombat. I don't remember the name right now. I'll put it up on the screen. That is adjacent to the location where Jerusalem is. So Wombat if that is the name, is located next to a river and then Jerusalem is across over another river, almost in line with it. Now, something very significant was that the person was saying that the name of one bad is Nisbet. This is Judy J reporting for Black TV 12. On my last video, I explained how present day Warm Bath, Namibia is actually an ancient city called Nisbet. Nisbet in southeast um, Namibia. Then I showed you an un unaltered map of ancient Africa from the 1800s that shows the town of Nisbet with biblical Jerusalem due east of it labeled. Now if you look at this you'll see Nisbet. And I said Nisbet. So I went and checked the spelling of the word Nisbet. And I realized that there is someone in our group with that name spelled exact the sa exactly the same way. Wow! What are the chances that name can be spelled so many ways? What are the chances it is spelled exactly like the person who is in our group? And then I looked and right above it, right above it, guess what? Elliot Hill. When I looked at it, it's a water coat. I was like, wow. Yeah, I was like humbled, I was like wowed because that is my last name spelled exactly as how it is spelled. Yes, and I said, bam, confirmation. We have a small group and in that small group, the surname of two of the men in the group. What are the chances of that? You tell me. What? are the chances it is the most high telling us and that is why i speak about predestination that's why i had to give you all of the things coming up to let you know that this is not somebody that's jumping up and saying something it has been a progression of revelations from the most high a progression of things and what can i say i have no doubt whatsoever we are now in the land of yasharal like abraham sojourning in the land in a land that we are to get for an inheritance at the right time the most high has us in the wilderness of the people and at the right time the most high is going to bring us into the land of jerusalem into mount zion mount zion yeah we have no doubt and so this is why i tell you we know we are in the land what an ear to hear, let them hear. You wanna reject it? Reject it. Alright? The people will be coming and say, oh, so how far did the Romans go? And all sorts of things. I don't know. What I can tell you is all that is revealed to me. I am not a know-it-all. As a matter of fact, I'm an idiot. I know nothing. Save what the most I gives to me. So whatever he gives to me, that I speak. I cannot explain everything. Who am I to explain everything? No brilliant person. Not educated like most of you. Yeah? Let's say I'm an idiot to the world. But what he has revealed to me, what he has revealed to me, I know to be true. And what I know to be true, that is what I speak. This is the land of Yasharal. I'm sitting, my feet are on the land. The biblical land of Canaan. The biblical land of Yasharal. This is where I am speaking with you. 
right now without a doubt. All right? This is what it is. Take it or leave it. All right? Not here to convince every, anyone, just to tell those who have an eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. This is the land of Yasharal. All right? This is Kazakh Eliyahu Yasharal. Let me see if I have anything else to say before I go. Anything else? No, no, no. And that's it. Until next time, have a great day and ciao.